$12,000 Open from Brunswick Aero Lanes in Buffalo. And competing today for the $2,500 first prize, we have Art Jazorski from Tonawanda, Mark Valenti of Buffalo, Gary Cressy of Buffalo, and Steve Nowicki from Rochester. Good evening, everybody. I'm Van Miller. We have a great hour of bowling action here. Four of the very finest bowlers in the region started, and they are survivors from a field of 308 bowlers. Our tournament director, a fine bowler in his own right, is Frank Cascio, here to tell us about tonight's competition. Frank? Hi, Van. How are you? How are you doing? Good. Van, in the first game, we'll see Art Jesiorski against Mark Valenti. The second match will feature Gary Cressy against Rochester's Steve Nowicki. And the winners of those two games will meet in the final match for the $2,500 first prize. One game for $2,500, and we'll be back to start our competition in just a moment. Here is our leadoff bowler, 50-year-old Art Jazorski from Tonawanda. He takes on 22-year-old Mark Valenti. A lot at stake in this our long match tonight, the two semifinal games, and then the final game for $2,500, and Jazorski is in and leaves the split. On his very first ball, leaves a 5-7 split. Jazorski, a longtime bowler with the Bison Sausage team, has a 200 composite average, excellent head-to-head -head bowler. Going for the 5-7 and goes by it. So he is open in the first frame. Now this is Mark Valenti. He is headed for the Pro Tour. 6'1", 195 pounds, 22 years old. He has a composite 211 average. What about his style, Frank? Very smooth, man. Uh, Four-step approach. A real stroker. He's a, he's a good bowler for young kids who are coming up in the game to watch. He's extremely smooth. Beautiful pocket hit with his first shot there. This is sudden death. You lose a game and you are out. And what's the prize money breakdown? It goes from 2,500 for the first spot. Runner up, 1,250, 700, and 600. And of course, that will be determined by scores by the losers of these first two games. 700 to the losing bowler who has the higher of the two losing scores. Here's Valeni going for the double on the right-hand lane, and he walks it in there. So he takes the early lead on Art Jazorski. Jazorski, a veteran of uh, Beat the Champ, on that show many, many times. He's had a 300 game, a 797 set. Looking for a strike here. Pretty good hit, Frank. Just a little high. Left the solid four pin. Art, an extremely tough competitor in this area for the last 20 years. Whenever there's a tournament, tournament and any money is involved, whether it's $100 or $5,000, Art is always in there, always plugging away. And Very a good head-to-head -head bowler. Very, Very competitive. Tough. Art Jazorski goes by the four pin. So Mark Valenti opens with a double and takes a big early lead. And there's no time to recover in this type of competition, Frank, is no there? No time. With, with a one-game match, Van, you have to do it all right really fast. Uh, it has to be right in that one game, and that's the only chance you have. Uncustomarily, Art going by a four-pin and missing the five, shooting the five-seven. High and a baby split this time. The three-ten. You had 308 bowlers in the field for the Channel 4 Open when you started. We started with an entry of uh, 308 bowlers. We took the top 28 bowlers, and they bowled head-to-head -head matches. And these four bowlers represent the semifinal or fourth round of single elimination games. Now Mark Valeni, who buried two in the 1-3 pocket looking for a triple with an opportunity to put Jazorski away early in this match, Frank. Well, Art has a long way to go now, Ben. It's one more here. Came in high. So that breaks him off on the left-hand lane. At a double. 
And we're going to see an outstanding Rochester bowler in the second game, Steve Nowicki. He's a tremendous bowler, isn't he? And Gary Cressy. And Valenti. This is misses the easy spare so on that ball it looked like he was a little quick at the line band he really didn't swing the ball out like he'd like to his his arm was away from his body and caused him to pull the ball inside so Jazorski misses the four pin and Valeni goes by an easy middle lane spare well he's still in a comfortable position he's up 28 pins in the third frame which is an awful lot to give a bowler It again, nice hit on that right hand lane, his third strike. Of course, another thing, Frank, you know, these bowlers are used to bowling for money, but when you get it down to $2,500 for one game, that's a lot of money for even a pro bowler to shoot sure for. Sure, it is. I don't know of very many local tournaments exactly that uh, total the $2,500 in the first prize. Mark Shazorski needs a strike. Got it. A lot of speed on his ball, Frank. Keeps a nice tight line. Yeah, that's the success of Art's game. It's very simple, hard, doesn't break the ball an awful lot. The two contrasting styles here, Art is, is more of a down and in shooter, straight down, ball hooks maybe four or five boards, where Mark is swinging the ball out over 10 and then bringing it back. Has more area to cover, but uh, more explosive if you're on. And Jazorski breaks up the 5-7. He left that. In the uh, first frame. Art's been having an awful lot of problems the last few months. I was talking to him about it the other day, and uh, almost on the verge of him quitting bowling. Really? Well, I had heard uh, the word was out that he was not bowling as well as he has been. You know, usually he's a tremendous competitor, and he's won everything in sight. <laughs> And all of a sudden, he came to the tournament, and he ends up shooting 733, which yeah. is a high qualifier. So he must have exactly. he must have found something out. Exactly. Valeni now with a double here can do maybe irreparable damage to Jazorski's chances. Walks it in and carries. Beautiful rolling ball, man. And, and Mark, I believe, uh, in the near future, will be uh, going on a tour. He had a 297 game, by the way, and I asked him if he was nervous on that shot. No, I was uh, very confident. I thought I threw a little, little farther down the lane than I have been, but it just broke a little late and that caused me to leave a washout. Shooting for a triple. He has a sizable lead on Art Jazorski in this first game. There it is again. There, I would say. Yeah. Yeah. We have to get him shoulder pads here. Frank. All right, we're going to take a break, and then we'll be back with a Channel 4 open and a $2,500 first prize. Art Jazorski in the face of a double and then a triple by Mark Valenti is in a lot of trouble here and pretty much out of this first game unless he starts to strike and runs a string and finds Valeni with a couple of opens, Frank. It looks impossible for him to catch him. Well, he's down and could be down about 80 pins. And to the problem with a one-game match, man, uh, he got off to a shaky start. And the last three balls have been in the pocket. He got tapped and uh, here, and he left a 10-pin in the other frame, fifth frame. And it's you can't do that. You just have to string strikes when you're that far behind. There's no time to make up. Exactly right. And Art Jazorski open with two unconverted splits and missed a four pin. The prize money again, $2,500 to the winner of our third game in the match this evening. 1250 to the loser of that game and 700 and 600 to our losers in these semifinal games. Beautiful hit by Jazorski on the right hand lane, only a second strike and now Mark Valenti. And that $5,050 that we're paying out right here uh, represents a portion of the $12,320 that this tournament paid out. 
Well, that's a lot of prize money for three games, five thousand dollars. Here's Mark Valeni. He's has a triple on the board, looking for a four bagger. Out in great action. So that's four in a row. And I believe this is Mark's first appearance on TV, Van, and he doesn't look nervous at all, does he? No, he certainly doesn't. Well, he bowls out of Rockmar. He carries a 211 composite average. Graduate of Cardinal Doherty High School. He was all Catholic three years in a row. Uses that relaxed fingertip grip and a four step approach, and he has put this first game away for all intents and purposes. Melanie looking for five. Looking for five. Oh, good hit tapped on the ten. Well, you can't do much better than that, man. I guess the idea is to hit the pocket, and when you do and leave, leave pin standing like that, uh, it's tough to make an adjustment. Mark told me he's turning pro this summer, Frank, after starting uh, bowling 15 years ago at the tender age of seven. His mom and dad looking on here this evening. Hey, baby. No problem. Well, let's hope he can do as well as another Rockmar bowler, Tommy Baker. Exactly. And uh, they bowl together many times at Rockmar. Well, a disappointing game for Art Jazorski. He really has not been in it. And leaves a solid four. Last five balls in the pocket. Yeah. He missed the four pin the last time he left it. Well, the worst he can do is earn $600. And third and fourth positions are determined by score. And that's not bad for 10 frames of bowling. No, it isn't. Jasorski goes to 105 through the seventh with a spare in the eighth. Valenti is 163 through the seventh. A 58 pin lead with two frames to play. Beautiful hit there. So Mark Bellini glancing over at the scoreboard where he likes what he sees. Open in the third frame, otherwise clean as a whistle with a four bagger and a double. Lenny swinging it in, gets in a little high, leaves a six pin. Mark qualified with a, started off his set with a 297. Beautiful game. He's just stroked out a little too far. The ball kept the ball down the lane a little bit too far, and it came in light, leaving the 124. 297. I believe that was the first time he had 11 in a row, so it must have been quite exciting in his last ball. Wow, I should say. So Valenti moves over onto the right lane. He can go to 232 by striking out here. And so that will put Valenti into the final game and our next game coming up will be Steve Nowicki of Rochester and Gary Cressy of Buffalo. Great speed on that ball Frank just buried it. Well he's going to be tough today man. Everything is right for me. I know he's been out here practicing an awful lot. He's working on his game. He's determined and that's what, what uh, usually what makes you bowl good. He's rolled seven strikes in this game with a four bagger, a two bagger, and needs another one here and an eight count to get the 230. Leaves the 10 pin. So we're looking at a conversion for 222 for 22 year old Mark Valenti, who will one move. out of the pocket. Just one, every other ball was right there. Doesn't waste any time in stepping up and converts the 10 pin. Has a nice game. Art Jasorski over to congratulate him. Two twenty-two. Arthur. 
came in a little bit high. Of course, this can be an important frame, too, Van. Uh, as we said, third and fourth places right. are determined by the final score. And if he had struck out, he would have gotten 185. Now he can go to 165. So he's hoping that the loser pulls less than 165. He can pick up an additional $100. $12,000 in total prize money and better than 5000 going in the breakdown for these three games this evening. The finals of the Channel 4 Open. And Art Jazorski beaten by Mark Bellini in the first game with Steve Nowicki and Gary Cressy coming up. And that's it. Bellini wins it with a 2-22 and goes to the final and will bowl that one for $2,500. This is Gary Cressy, 27 years old, out of Buffalo. And he goes against 37-year-old Steve Nowicki of Rochester. It is the second semifinal game. The winner plays Mark Valenti after this game for $2,500 first prize. Here's Cressy. Yep, got it. Gary qualified with a 683 set. Bold well as elimination matches. He had to go through uh, three rounds to, uh, to make the semifinal TV show. 37-year-old Steve Nowicki of Rochester opens with a strike. He carries a composite average of 214. Cressy's composite is 206. Nowicki has bowled four 300 games, a 792 set. Married with two children. And Frank, probably one of the best non-professional bowlers in the game. He is. He's probably one of the toughest shooters in Rochester. Extremely smooth style. Just tears the ball, tens apart. Well, he has opened with a double. After Gary Cressy had rolled a strike on the right-hand lane. And talking with Steve, he's extremely confident tonight. He likes that outside line. He rolls his ball around the fourth, fifth board, and he just loves to play that. And as you can see, I, I don't think he'll be out of the pocket too much tonight. Need a little help on the base of that nine pin, but that was not a good shot by uh, Gary Cressy. Crossed over. The winner of this game is guaranteed $1,250 in the third game, even if he should lose. No problem for Gary Cressy. Gets the conversion, moves over on the right-hand lane. The first game won by Mark Valenti over Art Jazorski, 222 to 164. Valenti had one open frame with a miss, seven strikes. Gary's a good local bowler, Van. He's, he's very active in local tournament bowling and, and always does well, always makes a few bucks. Cressy on 12. Breaks up the bucket. He has a three-pin spare to shoot at. The 2-4-5. And as Frank told you, uh, there is no room for error here. It is one game, sudden death. Extremely difficult spare to convert. Easy to chop that one. So many possibilities of miss it. Now Nowicki. He opened with strikes in the first and second frame on the left lane, number 11. He was in high, Frank, but he broke up the split. Well, he's a seasoned veteran. He's been around for a long time, Van, in all kinds of competition. Steve Nowicki has been known all over this state, does extremely well in tournament play, and He's I doubt very much if, that these lights bother him at all. He's a PBA regional winner. Been a member of the PBA since 1964. 
finished fourth in Edison, New Jersey, when he was on the tour. Misses the head pin. That's rare. Well, he came in high on 11. I think what he did is just overcorrected. He wanted to get the ball out a little more to avoid any splits, and he just got it out too far. Well, he's up by about eight pins, depending on what Cressy does in his fourth frame. But it's less than a mark at this point. 65 in the third. And a spare in the fourth for Steve Nowicki. And Cressy is on a spare in the third, 37 in the second. This is Gary's chance to catch up. He needs a double here to, to put him even with Steve. Beautiful shot. So Gary Cressy down by eight pins. Needs this strike. With a double here, he's come comes back to even or a couple of pins ahead, depending on what he would do in the sixth frame. A lot at stake here in this match tonight. How about it? How about it? He pulled the string, buried that one on the right side. So that leaves it right to Steve Nowicki. To get a strike in the fifth frame, we are virtually even. Might give Cressy a pin or two edge, depending on his count in the sixth. There's no wiki right to it. Oh, yes. Pull the string on that one beautifully. Extremely smooth style, kind of like Mark Valenti. Both bowlers are very fluid. No wiki 85 through the fourth. Cressy can go to 87 in the fourth. Now to Wiki trying to get the double here. How about it, Steve? No trouble. A lot of trouble. The 4 7 10. Well, he was flirting around there again. He adjusted the other way. First he was too high, then he goes, misses the head pin. Now he's back to too high and trouble. Looked like he tried to pull that ball up into the pocket. Remember the, on the last. Time he was on lane 12, he came in light. So yes, that's what I'm saying. He was high and then light, now back to high again. Well, you try to make those corrections, Van, you know, when it's only one game match. Well, we're going to take the break at the middle of this game and be back in a moment. The triple here can go about 25 pins up in this match. How about it? Going to come in high, and he's got trouble. So, whoops de do. Well, there's a lot of pressure and a lot of money at stake. Remember, the winner here is guaranteed $1,250. If he goes on and wins the final game, he can pick up $2,500. Gary Cressy. Robbie. shot. Well that was his opportunity to really put the pressure on Steve and what he did is opened and he just gave it right back to him. Now the match is well, he's one up by one pin. pin. So it's like starting all over again man. With four frames to play it is a one pin match. Gary Cressy on 12. Taking some extra time. Coming in high, breaks up the split again, and leaves the 6-10. Boy, he was flirting with trouble there. Looks like he's trying to push the ball into the pocket now. He's not relaxed. Ben, I'd like to uh, give some of the other amounts that the bowlers won. Bob Brace from Toronto came in fifth. He won 475. Rich DeLuca, Rochester, 450 for sixth place. Blondie Robinson came in seventh, winning $425. And Nick Schwab from Rochester, eighth place, $400. 
So a lot of people cashed in this tournament. 308 of the best. Here's Steve Nowicki. He can take the lead here with a strike. He's there. That puts the foundation in, puts him in position to come on to the lead. In all, 39 bowlers cashed in the tournament, 28 qualifiers, and then we paid down to 39th position. This is the right lane where Nowicki has had trouble, Frank. Let's see what he does here. See if you can make that adjustment. He was high, at light, and then high. Let's see what happens now. All right, he got it that time. That looked a little bit thin, but it carried. He got the good action and forced the seven off, and now grabs the lead in the match. Well, he really came through on that shot. He stroked the ball well. His arm, the ball was out in front of him. He reached out with it, and it, he led the ball down the lane and had enough finish to, to kick the pins out in a light hit. Forcing Cressy to strike here. Gary's got it. Nice play. About nine pins, Frank. Nine pin lead for Steve Nowicki. Gary Remember needs this to, to stay in the game. He can put pressure on Nowicki with a strike here. Going to go high or left, but not far enough left to carry. Again, he broke up the split. The right lane uh, seems to be the uh, the trouble lane here. Although Cressy has had two strikes on each side. Nowicki in a golden opportunity here now. If he can put another one in there, Frank. One more strike, and he has the match wrapped up. Oh, chop! What a place to chop the 6-10. Well, he left it twice in a row on that side and paid the price there. And Steve Nowicki comes in high again. And he almost ended up with a split. Right. Meanwhile, waiting in the wings is Mark Valenti, who opened with a 222 to beat Art Chazorski. And he's waiting for a one game shot at that $2,500 first prize. Nowicki, look out, look out. He chopped it. You could just see that coming. Now, now we are coming right down to the nitty gritty. Look at this, Frank. Well, he can shut if he if he strikes out. Right. Actually, he only needs. Um, but he's six pins, so this can go five. either way. He's got to be careful not to be open. Now let's see if we. It should be 165 there instead of 166. So he has a five-pin lead. 64. Eight all day got. Shoots off the spare. Spare up in the tenth. No, that's wrong. 18. It should be 56. 64. 164. 182 all day. So, 182 for Nowicki. Cressy needs a double to win it, Frank. He's got a double. He has to double here, Van. This is a very important shot. He's got to have two, a double here so it's all to go to, to the him. final. Gary Cressy knows what he needs. $2,500, top prize. By marking there, he forced Cressy to double. How about it? It's good. Coming in. And he got it right at the base of that four pin, Frank. Just had enough to trip out the four pin. Pressure shot, Ben. He needs, the next ball. He needs, needs another one here. Strike. And then has have to stay on this side of the foul line, right? And keep it on the lane. What a game. What a game. Gotta have this one. 
It'd be interesting to see how he executes. There's an awful lot of pressure on this shot. See if he can do it. Gotta have a strike, gotta have a strike, and a, oh, and he left the 10 pin with a beautiful hit. Oh, boy. Well, you can't hit it any better than that, Frank. I mean, he had it buried in the 1-3 pocket. He did what, exactly what he was supposed to, laid the ball down in the 1-3 pocket, rolled it well. It's just unfortunate they left the 10 pin. So Steve Nowicki is going to win the match by three pins, 182 to 179. An excellent, excellent match. It will be Steve Nowicki bowling against Mark Valenti for the $2,500 first prize in the Channel 4 Open when we come back. Well, this is it. One game for $2,500 top prize. Steve Nowicki of Rochester leading off on 12 and home. He's got the first one. Now 22-year-old Mark Valenti. He won the first game 222 to Arch Zorski's 164. Headed for the Pro Tour this summer. 211 composite average. Nowicki a 214 composite average bowler. Valenti had seven strikes in the first game. Swings it out, up, and good action. He carries. Well, being the local bowler, he has an awful lot of uh, rooters back here, man. We have a good crowd, too. Sizable. Excellent. Well, it's been a tremendous tournament, Frank, and I know you've worked very hard at it. And to get 308 top bowlers out, but of course, when they're shooting for $12,000, that's a lot of money. I'd like to thank all those bowlers who participated and made the event such a success. And also Mike Chase and Dave Mucci, who uh, did such a fantastic job on lane conditions, and the manager, Ron Reuter. Here's Valenti, looking for the double. And nicely. That's the double for Mark Valenti. Got good action to get the 10 pin out of there. And now Steve Nowicki, and he's reacted to the pressure before. He is a very tough bowler, as Frank told you. Walking up, walking up. Oh, a little light, and the pin is rolling, and it's a little short to knock off the 10. Other winners, Van, ninth place, Chuck Dever from Buffalo, $340. Tim Kirsch, Lockport, $330. Wayne Metz, $320. Fiore Conti Jr. from Dunkirk, your hometown, $310. And the spare for Steve Nowicki. A lot of pressure here. Both bowlers' uh, styles are comparable. Extremely smooth, man. Very fluid. Nice and easy reach out. And again, Nowicki missing the head pin on the right side. He did that once in the last match. But he's been having trouble on lane 12. So Mark Valenti with a double in the first two frames jumps into the lead. Difficult spare. Beautiful shot. Well, he eliminated, eliminated a lot of the error with a hooking ball covering spares like that by just firing down there. That ball turned over about four or five times. A straight shot covered all the pins. Here's Valeni digging in, looking for the three bagger. He has the lead with a double. Going to come in high. Breaks up the split. Well, in the first game, I think that was Mark Spare. This is the only shot he missed, Frank. 3-6. That's right. He had the miss on this shot. He went by it. And every other ball was in the pocket, so I don't know if he pulled it because of timing problems or if he was just a little anxious. No problem there. As he covers the spare. And the arithmetic in this $2,500 game shows Mark Valenti plus 12 after three frames. Valenti on the right-hand lane. Excellent ball. 
I know what Mark will be doing with his money. He'll probably use that uh, for his expenses on the tour when he goes out. And there are the a lot of expenses out there. Can eat you up if you don't win. Steve Nowicki. Oh, boy. How in the world would you possibly leave the nine there, There's Frank. a case of the ball driving too hard at the end. It finished too hard, and it actually chopped the five pin off the eight. Went right through. Instead of the five hitting the eight, it just picked the five right off. They call that the perfect tap. When you throw a perfect ball, you leave that. Look out. All right. Or chopping off the nine pin, I should say. Steve is a proprietor of a lane in Sodus, New York. That's east of Rochester, yes. small town. He has a 12-lane establishment there. No wiki, 55 through the third, a spare in the fourth. And again, oh, high. Got trouble. one in the woods there. Tough shot, Frank. Well, it looks like he's the pressure's on him. He's really trying. He's, he's adjusting. He's... He's lost something. I don't know if it's timing or concentration or what. He might, he might be overthinking himself in this one game match. He wants to make a correction extremely fast. 3 9 10 split. Oh. And he is open. And now a big opportunity for Mark Valeni to take a giant stride toward $2,500 on this game. He has a strike up in the fourth after a double. In the first and second, and a spare in the third on 11, the left lane. Oh. Leaves the solid four, but should be no trouble there. Broke just a little hard. Going to be up by about 27 pins if he converts this, Frank, midway through the game. Going to force Nowicki to get some strikes. Well, Steve, there's no time for spares, man. He's, he's got to come through the triple, at least, to get back into this game. Valeni routinely covers the four pin. Of course, Marco's only had one ball out of the pocket now, and, and actually two for the day. So he's hitting the pocket, pocket extremely well. Awful lot of confidence. If he gets full count, he's up by 27 pins. But we still have five frames to bowl. The first prize is $2,500 riding on this game. The loser walks off with $1,250 in this game. Oh, everything fell. Late seven pin, late 10 pin, Frank. A lot of roll on the ball, turning well, mixing the pins up, a lot of action, extremely good ball. Mark really looks good today, Van. I'm impressed. We'll be back in a moment. Steve Nowicki down by 27 pins with five frames to go. Comes up with a strike. Good mix on that ball. Just two of the pins apart, Van. Marking or matching uh, Valenti's strike in the sixth frame. Of course, I know. Steve and Mark both like the condition here that Mike Chase and, and Dave uh, Moshi put out for them. Got to have this double, Frank, when you're down by 27 with four frames to bowl. He got to bring it up off the head pin again. Got to break. That's been his downfall, though, is the right-hand lane. He just cannot solve the puzzle. Awful lot of problems with 12. He's really fishing on that lane. He's high. He's light. He doesn't look good at all. And he, and he broke up a very difficult washout. One, two, four, goes by the head pin. Well, a double here would just about close him out for all intents and purposes. So 22-year-old Mark Valenti is on the brink of the biggest win of his budding bowling career. on that ball, Frank. Good action with the pins, Van. He almost got away with one. Almost. Wally Gay from Toronto uh, was in 15th place. He won $280. Jim Reeves, 16th, $240. Jim Kelly from Toronto again, $230. Paul Kapsharowski, 220 
bowlers from all over, man. Toronto, Rochester, Bradford, Erie, PA. They all participated in this event. So Valenti is clean as a whistle here and is 128 through the sixth frame and is 39 pins ahead with three frames to bowl. If he stays out of trouble, 34 pins. He's right on target. Steve can still pull us out, man, but he has to strike out. No problem there with that ball. Only his third strike. Steve, if Steve strikes out and Mark opens, he can win the game. In the tenth. So this is an important ball for Steve. He has to strike out. The wiki must have this. No, nope, again, misses the head pin. Just did not have it on the right lane. So the right lane has been the downfall, and Valeni really has been consistently by far he made one bad shot, really, in the whole match, Frank. He did, That's when he, he had the miss in the first game. Mark's been very consistent, playing both lanes about the same. Not too much trouble hitting the pocket. Uh, Steve started out the first match. He was strong. He started out this game well, but all of a sudden, 12 has cost him, really, the match. He's just been lost. Well, at that point, it really is uh, academic, but had Nowicki put that shot in in the ninth frame uh, it would still Mark be up for grabs but uh, Valenti had a little room to relax I guess he deserves that shot Frank so Mark Valenti about to pick up a check for 100 or for twenty five hundred dollars One seventy six to one thirty seven can go out with two oh six. Got the first one. Similar hit in the sixth frame, cave them in. And there must be an awful lot of pressure, Van. You know, you have a one game match, we have really one game to do it, you can't make any mistakes. And when you do, you want to adjust right away, you don't, or you don't know if you should adjust or make the correction, really get fouled up. Maybe that's what happened to Steve Nowicki. Well, Just an so, excellent, excellent execution. Well, Valenti has had seven strikes now in each of his games. He bowled a 222 in that opener. One easily over Art Jazorski. Jazorski picks up $600 for fourth place. Gary Cressy gets $700 for third place. And here's your winner, going out in style with his eighth strike of the game. He's the winner as he finishes up here with a 206. Had one open in each game and was never in serious trouble. Nice hand for Steve Nowicki. The best he can do now is 167. Winner of the Channel 4 Open and the $2,500 first prize will be Mark Valenti, 22 years old, out of Buffalo, Cardinal Doherty High School graduate. Oh, again, a great hit. That's the second time he was tapped. He left uh, a nine down there before. And Steve Nowicki finishes it up. Mark Valenti is our winner, and we'll be back in just a moment. Congratulations. Turn right around here, Mark. Well, 
I'd like to get your comments on the match, first of all, your first game and then uh, the championship game. Well, lane 12, I had down. I knew that. 11, I had a problem, but I figured if I shoot a deuce, I'd win it. Boy, he didn't make many mistakes, Frank, did he? No, he didn't. Uh, just the opposite of uh, Steve, who had an awful lot of trouble on 12. What was the reason for that, Mark? I don't know. The ball seemed to be breaking, and a couple times he got it out, it just took off. All right, now you're headed for the Pro Tour this summer, are you, Mark? Yeah, I'm going to take a shot out there. All right, very good. What are your uh, plans? How many stops will you make? Maybe 10 the first year, depending on how I bowl. More or less, you know, if I win money, I'll stay out there. If not, I'll come back and practice. How much bowling do you do? How many games do you roll in, in the course of a week? About 50. I should bowl more, but when I become pro, I will. And you've bowled some with Tommy Baker, too, haven't you? Yeah, we've bowled a few games with him, leagues and practice. Is a lot there, of experience. Is, is there any player in particular on the tour whose style you feel you emulate? Uh, anybody that you try to copy? Thomas Baker. All right. <laughs> Frank, you have anything you want to ask the man here? No, I just want to congratulate Mark. I know he's done put an awful lot of time into his game. He's been out practicing every day, and when I talked to him a few weeks ago, he told me he was really at the peak of his game and was looking forward to this event. Well, congratulations. Uh, you survived 308 of the finest bowlers in the area, $2,500. Okay, Thank congratulations. You. Mark, come on out here, guys. Let's get Art Jaworski out here. Steve Nowicki, Gary Cressy, come on out here, gentlemen. We thank you all uh, for an excellent turn. Art, you just didn't get started today, did terrible, you? Terrible, terrible. He was a tiger out there. All right. Hey, good to see you, Steve. Know you're the, nice one of the very best in Rochester in many areas. Nice to be here. Thank you very and, much. And Gary, all you had to do, the one ball you had to bury. Come on in here. That's all right. So congratulations. Thank you very much. Okay, well, you have seen the very, very finest bowlers on display, and of course, Mark Valenti, uh, who has a, a 211 composite average, bowls down at Rockmar, wins the $2,500 first prize of the uh, Channel 4 Open. We want to thank Frank Cascio, the tournament director, the 308 bowlers throughout the area who participated in this $12,000 tournament, and of course, Channel 4. So again, our champion, Mark Valenti, thank you very much for looking in, and we'll see you again. Keep rolling on those strikes out there. So long, everybody. Channel 4 Open has been produced by WIVB-TV in association with Frank Cassio Tournaments and is sanctioned by the American Bowling Congress and the Women's International Bowling Congress.